Detron did this. I like that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Detron Does It. Of course, I am Detron, and I does stuff. And this week, I'm going to be walking you parents out there how to utilize the parental controls for your kid's Amazon Fire HD tablet. Now, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I have two boys. One's nearly four, and the other one's two and a half. I'll be honest with you. The internet is a weird place. And so having them with these Fire HD tablets, I certainly wanted to make sure that I had some control, parameters, and honestly, some input in the content that they're getting when they're playing on their tablets. When I got my son this Fire HD 8 tablet, uh, I went into the device and there's tons of controls on the actual device. If you want to explore more about the on-device options that you have as a parent, I have a video, you can click it, it tells you all about the Fire HD 8 tablet. Today's video is more about the parental controls that you have available to you on Amazon's website. Amazon, being as large as they are as a company, has developed some great tools for parents to make sure that you have ultimate input into what your kids do on their tablets. Whether you want to focus on an educational experience, whether you want to limit the amount of time that they can spend by automatically locking them out of the device, or if you want to just restrict content older than a certain age to ensure that your youth are only being exposed to content that you feel really good about. I'm not going to spend a ton more time on camera. I'm actually going to show you guys a screen grab and walk through exactly how each of these sections of these parental controls that Amazon has for you are going to be beneficial to your time as a parent while your child uses their device. What you want to do is type in parents.amazon.com. Once you type this in, if you've already got your Amazon account logged into your computer, it's automatically going to load up what devices you have available for parental controls. Here you can see that I have both my son Caden and my son Kaysen who have available devices. So the first thing that you get into is setting daily time limits. So here you've got daily time limits. Inside of daily time limits, you have the total amount of screen time that your child can have. You can set a turn on time, a turn off time, which means you don't have to manage whether or not they get on or off their device. They just won't be able to access it. Inside of this screen time section, you also have controls for what you want them to experience from an educational aspect. So uh, you can see here, they're asking me, do I want to reset his time? Uh, and then I said no, uh, but you can also change it to, yes, I want him to reach a goal of 15 minutes educational time or time limit for reading books or watching videos. So there's just a lot of options here to control how much exposure they get to each section. And if you want to encourage them to read more, you set it so that they have a larger goal or target. Uh, and if you want them to watch less videos, you minimize the amount of time that they can spend on videos. So once you're back out to the main screen, you can actually just pause the device. So you feel like the kids have been having too much exposure on the device, or maybe you guys are going out to dinner and you don't want them playing on the device once the food comes out, you can set a timer and pause that device for one hour, two hours, 12 hours, just so they can get a mandatory break from that device. The next section we're gonna look at is all the activity. So here, you can get a really good snapshot of what your child is doing when they're on their tablet. Here's communication history. My kid shouldn't be communicating with anyone on this tablet. And so you see nothing there, but then I can open up. Okay, what's the last app that he played? How much time has he spent on books or on the web in the last seven days? Uh, how much time has he spent going through apps? So all of this is really key information that you get a chance to absorb from what your kid is doing on their device without you being around. You also can go into the in-app purchases and turn all that off. That way, none of that accidental purchasing of anything while your child is on the tablet by themselves, it'll ask for a passcode or ask them to get verification from their parent and you'll have to go in and approve their transaction. If you click on web, it will actually show you every website that your child has went to. And then this way you can see what's slipping through the cracks, uh, what your child is watching, how much time they're spending on these things. And if you click the link, it'll actually take you directly to that video, which is super important because now you can get a firsthand look at exactly what your child is watching on that tablet in their spare time. And this gives you opportunities to correct 
whatever kind of video patterns your child might be into, but also give you a glimpse into what they like. You just never know if you're not constantly there with your children. Let's be honest, all of us are not over our kid's shoulder watching exactly what they do on their tablet 24 seven. If you click into the apps, similar, similar thing. Once you get into the app section, you can see what apps your child is spending a lot of time on. So you can see that there's Grover, the monster at the end of the book. We've got some racing cars in there um, and you can get a daily breakdown of where they're spending their time. That way, now if you need to redirect them, you feel like they're spending too much time on content that is centered around, I don't know, live action video then you can redirect them to something more kid friendly by changing the age parameters for what you've got it set to. And the same thing can be done with the video section. One of the best parts about this thing is you can go into the request history from your child and you can find out a recap of what apps they're trying to get a hold of. Now, as a parent, you get to approve these apps if you set it up that way. So you can set it up to where you need to approve every app that your child wants to download. That way you can say yay or nay if you like it or if you think that it's gonna be content unsuitable for your child. This is a history of all of those apps. And now again, I have some really good insight into what my kid is attempting to play. Uh, and you can also look and find out if it's something that costs money. That way you could deny it immediately if you feel like, hey, I'm not spending any extra money on this tablet when there's a ton of free games available. This device honestly just gives you analytics about your child and their uh, tablet behavior. That way you can make adjustments. If you hit the settings button, a lot more options open up for you. So now you've got uh, kids subscription and content. So now you know what stuff they have subscriptions to what age range you have your device set up for, whose device it is, and you can go in and change those age filters. Here you can set your device to a younger kid theme or an older kid theme, which will change the way that your child interacts with this device, limiting out a lot of content that they may or may not need to see. But again, setting the age parameters will also allow you to do that. If you click on the add content button, you can actually add content for your child's device right from the computer. That way you don't have to worry about prying it from their hands and going to download uh, stuff for them. You can add it right from the device or take things away right from the computer. That way you're really managing the experience. Now, there is something to be said for allowing that child to figure out what it is they like and go and download apps, um, but you really wanna have some control over it. So if you go on and you find something you don't like, just go and slide it off and you don't have to worry about them experiencing that. I mean, they even have Disney Plus and Netflix on here, but again, not the kind of stuff that you want a four-year-old getting into, and so I've got certain parameters on and certain things turned off. In this section, you can modify the web browser, allowing cookies, you can enable web access, or you can turn web access all the way off, that way you don't have to worry about them browsing YouTube, uh, and then you can filter videos as well. You can turn on or turn off hand-selected videos, which gives you the option to allow Amazon to select videos specifically for the age range that you select. That way, you don't have to go video by video figuring out what they should watch. They just get a set of videos that have been approved for children their age. You can do the same pre-approved approach for the websites, videos, and content. And here you have the ability to expand the selection that they have, which is basically giving them access to stuff not really deemed kid worthy, like Netflix or Zoom, or that's like more advanced for my children, but could be something if you have slightly older children. You can also adjust the languages. So you can do it in English, you can do it in Spanish. There's some additional languages available as well. And yeah, there's just, there's a bunch of Alexa enabled settings that you can have for your tablet and device. So Amazon is really just gone above and beyond with parental controls for parents who wanna be active in their children's tablet experience. Now, caveat to this, Amazon can only do so much and there's definitely some things that can slip through, but if you utilize these tools, you're gonna certainly minimize the amount of inappropriate content that your child may be able to get into and also maximize their educational experience on their tablet and maybe let them have some fun along the way. As always, if you like the content or if you just wanna have a discussion about these Fire HD tablets, please let me know down in the comments. I'd love to explore with you guys and I respond to just about every comment. All right guys, till next time. Peace.